Hi, hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing good. Have you ever heard of a place where when the sun sets it does not rise again for 65 days and when the sun rises it does not set for the next 80 days. This phenomena occurs in the north eastern state of Alaska in the United States of America. Let's see which is this place, why this phenomena occurs and is there any civilization that exists in that place in today's video. Barrow is the largest city in the US state of Alaska and is located in the north of the Arctic Circle. It is one of the northernmost public communities in the world and is the northernmost city in the United States of America. The population was around 4,212 when the census was taken in 2010. Barrow is well known because of its unusual location in the United States. It is located on the north coast of Alaska along the Arctic Ocean. There are about 2,100 kilometers between Barrow and the North Pole. The location has been home to the indigenous ethnic group for more than 1,500 years. The city's native name, Utkiawik, refers to a place for gathering wild roots. The name Barrow was derived from Point Barrow and was originally a general designation because non-native Alaskans residents found it easier to pronounce than the Inupiat name. A post office established in 1901 helped the name Barrow to become more dominant. Point Barrow was named after Sir John Barrow of the British Admiralty in the late 1800s. Barrow, like most communities in Alaska, looks temporary, like a pioneer settlement. It is not Barrow is among the oldest permanent settlements in the United States, hundreds of years before the European Arctic explorers showed up, Barrow was more or less where it is now, a natural hunting place at the base of the peninsula that pokes out into the Beaufort Sea. Yankee whalers sailed here, learning about the bowhead whale from Inupiat hunters. The US acquired Alaska in 1867 and the U.S. Army established a meteorological and magnetic research station at Barrow in the year 1881. In 1972, the North Slope Borough was established, with millions of dollars in new revenues from the settlement and later oil revenues. The borough has created sanitation facilities, water and electrical utilities, roads, fire departments, and health and educational services in Barrow and the villages of the North Slope. Owing to its location, some 320 miles north of the Arctic Circle, Barrow's climate is cold and dry, classified as a polar climate. Winter weather can be extremely dangerous because of the combination of cold and wind, while summers are cool, even at their warmest. Barrow has the lowest average temperatures of cities in Alaska, although it is rare for it to record the lowest temperature statewide during cold waves, extremely chill weather and white cold conditions from blowing snow which are very very common. Temperatures remain below freezing from early October through late May. The high temperatures is above freezing on an average of only 120 days per year and there are 106 days with a maximum at or below minus 18 degrees centigrade. Freezing temperatures and snowfall can occur during any month of the year. The first snow generally falls during the first week of October when temperatures cease to rise above freezing during the day. Having said that, October is usually the month with the heaviest snowfall. The sun sets on November 18 or 19 and it remains below the horizon for about 66 days. 
this creates a long polar night that lasts until the sun returns to lightly touch the horizon by January 22 or 23. The sky is not completely dark during the polar night. The soft glowing light from the sky caused by the reflection of the sun rays from the atmosphere allows enough light to see objects outside and the northern lights and full moon also help to light up the dark sky. The sun then rises again completely over the horizon by January 27 or 28. But during the first half of the polar night, there is a decreasing amount of twilight each day. In addition to its low temperatures and polar night, Barrow is one of the cloudiest places on Earth. Owing to the prevailing easterly winds of the Arctic Ocean, it is completely overcast slightly more than 50% of the year. Peak cloudiness occurs in August and September when the ocean is ice-free. Dense fog occurs on average of 65 days per year, mostly in the summer months. Ice fog is very common during the winter months, especially when the temperature drops below minus 34 degrees centigrade. Serious cold weather usually begins in January and February is generally the coldest month averaging minus 25 degrees centigrade. By March, the sun is up for nine hours and temperatures begin to warm, though winds are usually higher. In May, the temperatures are much warmer, averaging minus six degrees centigrade, beginning around May 11 or 12. The sun remains above the horizon the entire day and the phenomena known as the long midnight sun is observed. The sun does not set for about 80 days until around July 31st or August 1. The temperature is still very cold even though sun is there all the time. In June, the average temperatures rises above freezing to 2.1 degrees centigrade and the normal daily mean temperatures remain above freezing until September. As of the year 2010, United States census there were 4212 people living in the city the racial makeup of the city was around 60 percent alaskan natives and the other 40 percent comprised of caucasian african asian pacific islander hispanic and from two or more races numerous businesses provide support services to oil field operations state and federal agencies or employers. Most of the workers are government employees and the median income for a household in the city is around 80,000 US dollars, allowing families to meet the high cost of living in this place. The city has an airport, Bad Ohio School, elementary school, court, as well as restaurants, hotels, police stations, the city hall, a Wells Fargo bank, a library, post office, grocery stores and numerous houses. The area also includes a small broadcasting station which is run by the college students. And like many American high school, Barrow High School also has a football team. The midnight sun has attracted tourism and arts and crafts provide some cash income because transporting food to the city is very expensive. Many residents continue to rely upon subsistence food sources. Whale, seal, polar bear, walrus, caribou and fish are harvested from the coast or nearby lakes or rivers. Locals survive largely by hunting and catching fish from the Arctic Ocean to nearby rivers and lakes. Given the town's isolated location, food is often priced high because it has to be flown in. And in a local supermarket, the prices are warping. Even meal prices in the local restaurants are priced very high. The roads in Barrow are unpaved due to the permafrost and no roads connect the city to the rest of Alaska. 
The city is served by Alaska Airlines with passenger jet services from Anchorage and Fairbanks. The airport is the lifeline of the people residing here and the town relies solely on planes to get vital supplies like food, medical and people in and out of the area. Special aircrafts are built exclusively to serve small towns like Barrow where half of the aircraft is used as commercial passenger plane and the other half is used as cargo. For just a few months over summer when the ocean unfreezes, the town is able to sell in goods that won't fit on a plane, meaning locals who require a car or building materials can order those only once in a year. The town is also served by several radio taxi services, most using small four-wheel drive vehicles. The city's small wooden homes were built up on pilings to keep them from melting the permafrost, which could cause them to sink. In October 2016, through a referendum, City voters narrowly approved to change its name from Barrow to its traditional Inupiaq name Utkiyavik. The ordinance was passed by just six votes, with 381 votes in favor to 375 votes opposed, according to Alaska Dispatch News. The governor had 45 days to rule on the name change and it was officially adapted on December 1, 2016. The authors of the ordinance also acknowledge that Inupiaq is the original ancestral language of this area and its people and that returning the town name to Utkiyavik would promote pride in their identity and would also honor the disappearing Inupiaq language which is currently spoken by about 3,000 people in Alaska. Moreover, the area has been inhabited by native Alaskans for centuries with archaeological evidence showing the site was inhabited starting around 580. Opponents of the name change uh, were concerned uh, it would cost the city money both in terms of changing all official references to the new name on things like stationery and signage and the loss of emotional capital or recognition that come along with the name Barrow for tourism and business. However, the residents remain divided about whether the name should have been changed at all, whether the process was hurried, and whether the Utkiyavik is even the proper Inupiaq place name. Several residents share their perspective on the topic. Please see this video by Mark Lester, Alaska Dispatch News. In November, the sun set over Barrow, Alaska, America's northernmost town, for the last time. When it rises again in January, it will instead be over the town of Utkiavik. Utkiavik is the original Inupiat name for the town. About 4,300 people there voted to switch its name in October, but the change officially went into effect December 1st. The new town name doesn't have a direct translation to English, but refers to a place to gather roots or potatoes. It's important to me and many of us because, uh, our, our language is severely threatened, and, um, and, and, and I think it's time we uh, begin healing. The University of Alaska says there are about 13,500 Nupiat in Alaska, but only about 3,000 people still speak the language. The name change from Barrow to Karvik has been challenging. What? When did this happen? You know, I was like, what? I have no preference whether I'm in Barrow or whether I'm in Kervik, I'm in the same place. Where, how did I miss it? A very, very important thing. Because we are from Barrow. When the name change came up, that was new to me. And, um, and uh, it just it threw me off because, you know, it's, it's been called Barrow for such a long period of time, you know? My personal opinion, I'm for it. Um, it's the younger generation fighting for the right to have the traditional language become our first language. With the immersion of technology, um, everybody has phones, everybody's on their iPhones, iPads, um, and we're not as connected to the land as we once were. Barrow's been our home for 
It's been my home. I was raised in Barrow, and my parents were born in Barrow, and my grandparents. It, it kind of throws people off, you know, and the language and the pronunciation. If you look at the numbers of, of the vote of the election, it was only six votes that, that made the difference. At the city council meeting, there was much, much discussion. I mean, that should have happened before. The p town hall meeting that we had and the regular city council meeting where I introduced Ordinance 17-2016, just the, the number of people that showed up, you, you can see the divide. Well, I felt like it was stolen from me. The moments were stolen from me. You know, we local real people of Barrow um, know Barrow is a perfect place where the snowy owl nests or a place where the snowy owl lives. From the time I was a child growing up, it's been Utkervik. And I wasn't really aware of the differences between Utkervik and Utkervik up until recently. But I thought there was, I thought there was a name Utkervik which is a good place to hunt snowy owls. I thought that was, I thought that was the traditional name. Ukpiavik would have been, if we were down on the site that they're talking about, would be down about a mile offshore. People were out there. So they look at Ukpiavik up, up inland on the high cliff. And then we have lots of barrow things all over town. We have barrow utilities. It's our cooperative, you know, and but who's going to know Utkervik? All of the schools would have to readjust the names, you know, and maps. and People are still going to be calling it Barrow. Um, we'll know it as Barrow. It's still Barrow High School. Regardless of what the name is, whether we're the city of Barrow or the city of Utkervik, we the people in, in the community will still be the same people. The divide is definitely generational, um, but it's bringing this stop topic to light and people are discussing it. It's a cause for discussion. Despite all this, tourism is getting more popular here and visitors come to this place from nearby airports to learn about indigenous Inupiaq people. Visit the Heritage Center and learn about their whaling history and the Alaskan Arctic culture. The iconic ark is made of whale bones and is a symbol of their relationship with sea and whaling. Visiting here could be an adventure. and One can see the rarest of beaches and majestic snow and ice. But for the locals who are residing in Utkiawik, it is a pride for them to be here and to raise a family and being associated with this community. It is part of the heritage. And for many, it has been a home for thousands of years. Hope you guys would have liked this video. If that is so, please do share and subscribe. I will be back soon with some more videos. Till then, take care and thank you.